Hello, this is Carrie from Artstitution, and I'm going to be painting with you today this um, Western-inspired cow skull. Um, so what you're gonna need, I'm using a 12 inch by 12 inch stretched canvas, but you could use anything. You don't even have to stick to a square. If you have a bigger square, obviously, you're just gonna be painting bigger. If you have a rectangle shape, just change the composition a little bit. So if you wanna do it, um, Vertically, you can put the cow skull anywhere you want, at the top, the middle, the bottom, whatever, fill it up with designs. You are totally free to do anything that you want, okay? So I'm just gonna sit here step-by-step step and show you some skills and techniques and feel free to elaborate on them. Feel free to drift off and do your own thing. Um, I'm always gonna be here for you um, if you wanna join back in. So I am going to paint this. Also, if you don't want to use the same color scheme, you know, don't do, use the same color scheme. As you can see, I didn't give, I'm not, I'm not using, and I, I didn't give myself any of those colors in here, so I am going to be mixing all these colors. And mixing is a very, very big part of painting. Um, it's really good for you to know what colors make what. Um, it, mixing to me is really empowering and um, sometimes frustrating, but more empowering. So I want you guys to know about color and I think that's a huge part about painting. I feel like if I gave you all these colors It's sort of like you're missing the opportunity to kind of see what how to make those colors All right, so You should have your egg carton or whatever you're putting your paint in I my kids eat a lot of eggs So I always keep the egg cartons these they're perfect for paint I filled mine up all the way to the top only so I don't have to get up while I'm teaching and refill any colors so but I want you to Kind of, you don't, you definitely don't need this much paint. Um, you could always put more in. I just did this, you know, like I said, so I don't have to get up. Also, I always save my paint in a plastic bag, so I will use this and probably paint five more paintings using this much paint. So you can use your paint for days after you're done with it if you have some leftover. So don't waste, you know, don't waste paint. You can definitely use it for a couple days as long as it's in a sealed plastic bag. All right, so I'm using this medium flathead brush and a small round brush. I do all my mi mixing with this medium brush, um, just because the tiny brush, I just never get enough paint and it's annoying to me. I also try to keep it in little piles when I mix. And of course, you're gonna get to a point where it kind of gets bigger and bigger, and, and that's all right. The more you paint, the more you realize, you know, you get used to keeping, trying to keep it in little, little piles so you have more paint. All right, so obviously, um, we're going to use the smaller brush for more detail, so we're going to go back to that later, and obviously we need to mix some paint. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually draw this out first. So we're going to we're going to use this little one as a pencil, but we're going to mix first. We're going to use this medium one. So I want you to just put a couple globs of uh, white paint. Don't be shy. Let's say three globs of white paint onto your plate. Now, I, I don't like to... Um, wash my brush unless I really really have to and how I get away with that is instead of um, you know taking this dirty brush and dipping it like right in the middle of the black I just take it from the edge so you only need a tiny bit of black very tiny bit of black I'm even going like this before I add it into my pile because that's gonna overpower the white and I only need a very light gray I'm actually gonna make my gray a little bit darker so you can see it better but I want your gray to be light only you need to be able to see it Okay, because we're going to cover it all up later. And we're just sketching it out. We're kind of using the paint like a pencil. And you might be asking why not just use a pencil. is because people get eraser happy. And when you start, you know, dealing with the eraser and you get stressed, uh, it just gets annoying. So I just like to do it with paint. Then you can paint right over the, right over the gray. It's very easy to cover. Um, so I want to talk about a grid. Gridding. You know, we, I, I typically try to have an imaginary grid every time I paint. So for this, I'm just kind of gonna divide this canvas um, into fours with my imagination. So if there's an imaginary line going down the middle, and this one's great because there's like an actual line going down the middle here of the skull. Um, I also want you to um, have an imaginary line going across. This will help us measure out where stuff goes, okay? So you're gonna take this small brush at any point, if you're an experienced painter, or even if you're not, if you don't want to use the same brushes as me, don't use the same brushes as me, okay? Just, it, it, just use what feels good and what feels comfortable, okay? And, and everybody's different, and everybody's, you know, in, you know, everybody's comfort levels are different. And we're going to talk about that leverage and things like that as we go along. 
but it's important to feel comfortable. All right, so get comfortable. So what we're gonna do first is we are going to be putting that imaginary line. You don't have to go all the way from the top, but I want you to figure out how, if this was the middle, okay, so that, that top of the skull is about the quarter of the way um, up. So I'm just gonna put like a little, a little kind of mark there. That's where my top of my skull is gonna be. Then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have just a line going right down the middle, okay? And the bottom of the skull is gonna be all the way down here. So you have this guiding line, okay? And the top of the skull is going to be this rounded shape. Now, my see how, you know, sloppy my lines look? I, I don't care because it's all going to be covered later. All right. So this is going to be what's going to guide us to this shape. All right. So try not to think that we're, we're going to paint a skull right now. Try to break it down into shapes like we're painting right now. We're, we're painting shapes. So when you see this, it almost looks like you have a top of the skull, like almost like a round ball up there, okay? If that helps, okay? Then you're gonna kind of, kind of come and then the top of the head goes right into the eye sockets, okay? Now I might move my stuff around if I feel like they need to be moved around later, okay? And that's okay, all right? And then you're looking at this shape. So we have, we're coming down and to the right and then down again, okay? So we have, we're coming down to the right and then down again. All right. And typically my paintings never come out exactly like my originals. And I say this, I know you guys, if, you, if, you do, if you've been to my paint nights or if you've done my, my uh, YouTube videos, I say the same things over and over because I can't stress it enough. The, the awesome part about doing these paintings is the fact that nobody's is the same, okay? And that's why original art is so valuable, all right? So I'm probably gonna make these bigger. I'm gonna adjust this later, but for now, just kinda, kinda put some shapes in here so you kinda understand where they're gonna go-ish doesn't matter if it's even across don't worry about it um and these uh, what I want to do for these uh horns is I want you to just start because it's a little tricky to get them to be kind of even around not that they're perfectly even anyway but I like to start with just almost like a stick figure we're making like a stick figure so we're going to just do that okay then we're gonna build on that. So before we get to the horn, which is probably about here, here, that's the bottoms of these, it's kind of attached with some kind of foam like this, okay? Again, I, we're gonna, you know, you can adjust all this stuff later. And the horns are just going, they're going from fatter here to skinnier up there. And, you know, if there are different shapes than that, don't worry about it. You can make them any shape. You can make them squiggly. You can make them whatever way you want. I don't care. It does not matter. Get as into this as you want. And when we, when we start painting them in, you can adjust the shapes of them too. But for now, we're just getting something. We just want something in here. All right. And you can also measure things out using your brush. See, my head was way too low. So I want to make it a little bit bigger, higher. Okay. All right, so I know my head, want my head to be up there a little bit. Is it okay if it's down there? Yeah, it does not matter. All right. Even if you want to make your two little holes for your nostrils, these are just ovals, just so you can see where they're going to be. Feel free. So you want like a very loose sketch of this. And that should just help you start, all right? So I want you to take this brush and I just want you to stick it in your water. Wash off that other brush, that mixing brush. So make sure, I'd rather it be very dry than completely clean. It doesn't matter if there's like remnants of a, a little bit of remnants of paint on it. I just need it to be very dry, okay? So water likes to get stuck inside this metal part. So just make sure that you Dry it off really good. Always keep your brushes in the water because if you leave them out, um, acrylic paint dries really fast. So you want to 
put them in the water just so they're not, they, they don't get ruined. All right. And when you're done, treat your brushes good so they last. When you're done, wash them off, dry them off. Don't try not to, and I'm saying this like I never do it. I always let my brushes sit, it's horrible. Um, but I definitely recommend you wash, washing them and drying them off right after if you want them to last. All right, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm actually gonna mix a brown paint. So brown, the base color for brown is orange. So I am going to do Let's make a big pile of brown. So let's do four big scoops of yellow onto your plate. So when you make orange, you need a lot more yellow than red. So red's gonna overpower the yellow. So let's just do a one scoop of red to that and you'll see you'll get like a nice orange color just from that. All right, and you're gonna mix, 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 make sure it's all mixed in there. All right. So, then what I want you to do is I want you to mix some blue into that. So you don't need a lot of blue. Blue is going to overpower this, but by adding blue, it's going to turn into like a muddy orange, okay? And you can always add little, little, a little bit of blue at a time. So see how it's turning into like a mud color? That's where we're going. And there's lots of different kinds of brown. You can add a little bit more red, a little bit more yellow, but if you get a green color, it just means you have too much yellow and blue, and you can try adding more red and it should bring it back, okay? So you really wanna get it as much blue in there until it's, once it starts looking like you can tell there's blue in there, that's when you wanna stop. When it has a blue tinge, so. Now we have like a nice tan color but we want brown, so we're gonna take this brush, it looks so goopy, and again, I'm gonna dip it in the black, but on the edge of it, so I don't, I don't wanna dip my dirty brush straight in the middle, because then I'll dirty up all my black, so I wanna just put a little, little bit at a time, because black's gonna turn this really dark really fast. So just make sure it's, your whole pile is nice and mixed, okay, because we're gonna use brown a lot. So mix, mix, mix. I love mixing. I don't know, some people get really frustrated mixing. I find it very relaxing. Sometimes I don't even know what color I want until I start messing around. I'm like, ooh, I like that. So if you are if you wanna mess around, like if you feel like you want yours to be more on the red side, you can add a little bit more red. You know, experiment a little bit. If, you, if it looks too red, you can add more yellow. If it's too milk chocolatey looking and you want, you know, I think we, I want mine definitely a little bit darker so we can add a little bit more black. All right, now we're getting to a nice brown. So there's lots of different variations of brown. Well, if any color really, brown too. So get to a nice dark color brown that you like, all right? So I'm gonna, this is a nice, brown color I'm going to start with, okay? Now, the brown I'm using here is a little bit more yellow than the brown I used for there, so that's okay. That's totally fine. So what you're going to do first is we're going to take this gooey brush. Actually, you know what? Before that, I want I forgot. I want you to add just a tiny bit of white to that. Not I don't want this to be light brown. I just want it to be like a milky brown because when you add a tiny bit of white, it covers better. It's a little less transparent. I'm going to wash my brush because when, when I mix a lot, it gets all goopy. So I like to wash it off. Dry it off. Don't forget to dry it off. The middle part and all that. Alright, so here we go. I'm going to just fill all this in. Here's where you can adjust the shape. And don't, don't worry if you if your paint is transparent, because we're gonna go for round two after this. We're gonna do two rounds. So here's where I'm gonna get, I'm gonna use my paint to adjust, I'm gonna kinda adjust my shape of my skull a little bit. And there's no point where you are done adjusting. I mean, you can adjust throughout the whole thing. And what's cool about this kind of paint is that it dries fast and you can paint over it really fast. So 
we are going to basically work from the positive space to the negative space to the positive space to the negative space. So we're going to go back and forth. So if you want to make your um, skull a little bit bigger, then do that now. Don't worry about the holes for the skull now. We'll go back and do those later. Right now, I just want you to get the shape in there. It's almost impossible. I mean, unless I was measuring out this, I'm going to sneeze. Oh, excuse me. Oh, excuse me. I don't know about you, my allergies. I, I felt like they were here before spring even hit. But we've been, uh, we've been making trails in our woods for the past um, couple weeks, basically since the kids have been out of school. If you see a dog, there's, my dog's right here, so if you see weird hair, then it's not, you know, Bigfoot. It's just my dog. Um, we've been making trails in the woods. I kind of anticipated, I mean, I, I was hoping it wasn't going to happen, but I kind of figured that at some point they were going to close all the parks. So we've been, uh, we, uh, the trail's about, I'd say like a half a mile now. And uh, yeah, it's cool. The kids go in there and we pretend like it's our little national park, our little state park, our private park. And I feel for very fortunate to have room. You know, I feel bad for people in apartments right now during all this. They're all cooped up and now we can't go to parks either. So yeah, we're being challenged for sure. And it's good that we have something like this, you know, something to settle our minds, something to take our minds away from things and be relaxed. It's, it's a meditation. All right, so you are going to do these guys up here the same way. So I'm going to move my horns up a tiny bit, this thing in the middle. So adjust things, adjust everything the way you want it. And again, you'll see at the end, and it's hard to explain when people first start a painting, but you know, it's very unimportant where, you know, for it's, it's secondary. It's not important at all, actually, to get it to measure up the same way the original is. Um, and it stinks that we, none of us can see each other, but you know, people have been posting their paintings, um, on our Facebook page, which is awesome because you see so many variations of the paintings and it's so cool. And that's what I love about it. I love seeing all the interpretations. And that's what all this is. I mean, it's all different interpretations of the same thing. And again, this is something that I can't stress enough. And I say it when I teach live and I say it when I'm recording these things. Uh, you know, you have a style. And people laugh because they're like, oh, I've never painted in my life. I don't have a style. Everybody has a style. If you have a signature, that's a style of writing your name. So it, you paint with the same exact hand. So you have a style of painting. So I, my job is not to teach you guys how to duplicate a painting. I just use paintings, you know, so you guys have something to base something off of, like when I'm teaching you some techniques and skills. Once you do a bunch of these, you can actually go off and do whatever you want, you know? So you don't have to stick with, you know, copying a painting. You'll have more confidence to go and do, you know, something on your own for sure. So the thing about these bones in here, just just think that they're, they're, they're holding this thing up so it has to be kind of like straight through. All right, make sure there's no pools or puddles anywhere. Don't worry if it looks sloppy, none of that matters. If you wanna turn it upside down, that kind of helps with uh, evening things out. Like, you know, if you want to kind of measure things, and of course it does not have to be perfectly even, like I said. But if there's things that you think look off when you put it, when you uh, hold it upside down, it definitely helps. All right. You can even kind of go measure by going across, like say, oh, the eye, the size over here and this side is over here make sure they're even same thing over here you can kind of measure it out all right let's 
that's good enough. So what you're gonna do next is, we're gonna do the background. I'm just gonna do um, that color, the uh, turquoise color. So I'm gonna wash my brush off, take a sip of tea. I've been drinking this awesome tea. Um, it's called Prickly Pear Cactus. Oh my goodness, it's so good. It's they, I don't remember who makes it, let's see. Tazo, is that how you say it? Tazo, Tazo? Anyway, it's really delicious. And I know they sell it at Target, they don't sell it at Walmart. All right, if you're interested. <laughs> So, if you're wondering how to make turquoise, and of course there's also many, many variations of turquoise. This is not about you getting to my color, it's about you getting to a color that you like. And we're gonna be adding dark and light and all that stuff. So let's just get a base color of turquoise down. And we need the whole background. So I'm gonna put um, four nice big scoops of blue onto my plate. And again, I'm gonna scoop out of the yellow. So instead of dipping my dirty brush right in the middle, I'm gonna just Take some yellow from the edge, and I'm gonna start with four scoops of blue and one scoop of yellow. And then I'm gonna add two, well, let's do, I'm gonna do two scoops of white and see where that brings us. It doesn't really, like we're gonna, this is the first coat of the background, so don't worry if it's not the color that you want. So mine went way light, okay. So I'm gonna add another scoop of blue, two more scoops of blue to mine, because I don't want mine that light. I'm also gonna add a tiny bit of black because I wanna take, I wanna take the, sort of the edge off of it and make it a little bit more rustic-y looking. Yeah, there we go. So you can slowly add a little bit, little bits of black at a time. Mess around with blue and yellow, white and black, and you know, come up with a nice turquoise that you like. You might not know it till you see it. All right. Okay. And then we are going to see how mine gets all over the plate. So don't worry if yours gets, you feel like you're using up a lot of space. It happens. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the whole rest of the white on the canvas. And I want you to keep it nice and thin. I know we just totally you know our brushes are totally goopy right now so just really kind of work that all around i like to do the edges too so we're gonna, i'm going to try to um give you guys a, a big variation of paintings on here so i know people are into all different things so i'm going to have some floral stuff we're going to do some animals i already did like 10 paintings that I need to video. So I want to have a lot. I know I my kids Easter break is this coming weekend. Actually, you probably don't even know what day it is right now. I don't even know what day it is right now. The 7th, April 7th. My kids have their spring break this coming weekend um, in the following week. So um, I know a lot of schools have it already or had it starting last week. So for those that have, whose kids are gonna be home, actually, I guess everybody's kids are gonna be home anyway, but um, I know with no schoolwork, there's gonna be a lot more time to fill in. So we're gonna have a lot, a lot of stuff up. Jenna's gonna be working on, she's been working on a bunch of stuff too. All right, so don't worry about the brush strokes. And when I get to be up here, I'm kind of feeling uncomfortable. So like reaching, so I'm gonna just do that. Your canvas is not glued to your easel, so feel free to swing it around and change it up. Um, it's really important that you feel comfortable while you're, when you're painting. And just fill up all that white space. So typically when I start a painting, I do what I call an underpainting or a wash. Um, and that's what this is, and, and really all it is, is a foundation of what we're gonna paint. So just like a house, you need to have a nice, strong foundation in order to build a sturdy house. Painting's the same, and any, anything's really the same. Um, you wanna have a nice base. So really, I know this part isn't the most fun part, 
but it's it's very ne necessary. So take the time, go thin, because we're gonna go for another round of brown on here and then another round of turquoise or whatever color that you chose on the background. So take your time here because we're actually waiting for the brown to dry. And it should be dry by the time we get there again. So um, I know it's been hard with, I don't know how pa parents who have to work from home I mean, I paint, this is what I do from home, I teach, so it's really not as stressful, but people who have actual work they need to get done and they have to teach their kids, and I do not know how everybody's doing it, but they're doing it, and I commend everybody, because even teachers, because I, I, I am an art teacher, you know, this is, I teach people all the time, that's what I do, and I had, like, I had no idea how impatient I was with like academic, like teaching my kids academic stuff. I also didn't know how much I didn't know. <laughs> I had no idea how much I I was gonna learn just homeschooling, you know, just checking their work and kind of just kind of. I don't I don't think I ever knew. I wasn't I wasn't this aware ever of how, what they were doing in school, which is bad. You know, I have no idea. I guess I should have known, but uh, it's pretty cool. I'm enjoying this experience. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to really savor all the good points about it. Because, of course, it's it's definitely stressful. It has its stressful moments. But I really thought I was going to be a lot more stressed than I actually am. I, I really enjoy spending this much time with my kids. I mean, they're a little bit older, so it's not like I have toddlers I'm like trying to keep alive every two seconds, and these, my kids are eight and almost 12, so, and they have each other, so they're like best friends. They go off in the woods and, or go play soccer outside, and you know, they have each other, which is great. So we're lucky to have a space, really, for them to play. Um, for all those people in apartments, I mean, I, that's, that's hard. It's hard for anybody anyway, but apartments, yikes. But this will all be over and the world I hear, will be a different place in the end. So, all right, so I think I want, let's go. So if you want to adjust your shape of your skull, you can overlap. You can come in with the blue or come out with the brown. Um, so I like, um, I'm trying not to say um so much because in these videos I really had no idea how much I was saying um, that's like my filler word, so I apologize. Um, <laughs> if you paint the edges, it looks better when you hang it on your wall. You don't really need a canvas. I mean, you don't need a canvas anyway. I mean, a canvas, what am I talking about? A frame with a canvas. I think they look good just, honestly, we take thumbtacks or what do you call it the tacks and we just put like 50,000 tacked in your wall that's how I hang up all these things all right so what we're gonna do next to so wash that brush dry it off we are going for round two I like these two colors together but it's funny that this is gonna be that and um, people don't believe me but it will so we're just gonna go over this if you did a thin layer it should be dry and you should, the second layer should cover perfectly. Just make sure there's no white peaking. And this is where you wanna really get that shape in, okay? And, and, and like I said before, there's never a time where you're like, all right, that's it, you can't adjust any, like, you're, we're gonna be adjusting the whole entire time. So, I, I always say too, like, people think that they're like selling their soul with paint, it's just paint. I've done multiple paintings on top of each other. So don't think that it's like, per, I mean, it's permanently like, you know, the, all the paintings are permanently on top of each other, but don't feel like, you know, things aren't fixable. If you screw up, um, I don't want anybody to be stressed out. There's nothing you can't fix. Sometimes it just takes one time using this kind of paint for you to realize that. Um, but, oh, there's the um again. 
Mm. It's like my chant. Um, but yeah, you can always, always, always fix stuff. That's what's so great about acrylic paint, and that's why all these paint nights, these uh, paint and sip things, and they're so popular, is because it's very forgivable. So acrylic paint is very, very forgiving. Forgivable, forgiving, you know what I mean? If this were like watercolor paint, it definitely, there's a point where you could go way too far into it and you could ruin a painting because, you know, when you're using watercolor, it's typically a watercolor paper and papers only can handle so much, so many layers. And I, I love watercolors and I, I go very slow and I go in very, very thin layers, but I've ruined many, many paintings. But, you know, if you can walk away having learned something, then, you know, it's, it's worth it. And that sounds so cliche, but it's true. There's never a point where you can say, oh, I mastered that, because you can always learn. So see how I'm getting this corner? I'm switching my brush to go like vertically here, but I'm also being very lazy, because you could totally take your small brush and do it. I'm just not. <laughs> so just because I'm not using the small one doesn't mean you don't have to, you know, you could do whatever you want. You could switch it anytime. I am gonna turn this around so I can kind of have better leverage over here. It's funny, I try, I typically do these when my kids, you know, are watching TV at night or they're, they go to bed because I get kind of, I'm not as relaxed when they're kind of running around like maniacs. I mean, some of these videos, you'll hear them wrestling in the background or things falling and breaking. So not tonight, tonight. They're at their dad's house, so this is gonna be very, very relaxing. I actually painted with my eight-year-old. He wanted to do one of these today. So we sat and painted a dinosaur. It was fun, it was very relaxing. All right, cool, cool. Now one more coat on the back. And we're done with the underpainting. So my back, I can tell it's a little bit wet still. So I'm gonna try to start, I think I started on this side and then I'm gonna go that way. I'm gonna kind of take the same route. So by the time I get there, hopefully it'll be dry. If not, no biggie. Second coat's gonna really go on nice and smooth. And we're gonna do, you know, if this doesn't cover all the way, that's fine, like if you could still see some strokes through it, that's absolutely fine. It's not a big deal. Because we're gonna go back over this after this dries with some darks and some lights. We're just doing the base right now. So with this, I went back and I did like, I did a really dark um, turquoise and I dry brushed it. Then I went back and I did a light turquoise. And the end is fun because you kind of go around and like tweak the parts and adjust things. For now, we're just kind of being very general and broad and not detailed. Again, like I'm, I'm trying, I'm using my, this brush for this small space. Just, so again, I'm being very lazy. I'm like the lazy, I'm not a typical la lazy person, um, quite the opposite, but uh, for some reason, when I'm painting, I don't know if it's my, like, I'm overzealous and I'm like, I don't know, painting quick and I want to get to the next painting, but I don't know, I just kind of don't like to wash my brush, unless I really, really have to. And I know some people have to wash their brush for their soul after every dip, and that's totally fine. I don't want you to feel, I don't, like, uncomfortable, I'm not going to bring you out of your comfort zone. You know, there's many, many, many variations to this. You might have, if, you know, done these online courses. There's like a million of them. You find a teacher that you like and you stick with them. Because there's, there's, we're all different learners and we're all different teachers. And you might not enjoy the way I do it. And you might enjoy the way I do it. So there's, the good thing is that there's 
so many options on, online, especially now that we're all quarantined. I know all the paint, like places are doing these. And it's really cool. So we also sell boxes called the color box. Um, and what that includes is basically what, everything you see me painting with right now. So we have the easel, the same easel, smock, paint, egg cartons, paper plates. So uh, it comes with canvases, basically everything you need to do two paintings. You even, you probably have more, enough paint to do four paintings if you ration it out and uh, you know, you put it in a plastic bag, like I said, and don't waste it. But it only comes with two canvases, so. But I did hear, I had a, some students who said that the dollar store or the Dollar Tree sells like canvases. I had no idea. I was like, I'm gonna totally check it out when this is all over. They're probably gonna be all sold out, but. <laughs> and I've seen paintings, I've seen paintings of people post and they say they got all their supplies from the dollar store. So that's pretty awesome. So no excuses. But if you do want to use all the same stuff that I use, um, you can get that on our website. First, oh, we're sold out now, but I should have stuff back up there soon. I don't know, some people don't know what they need, so it's easier to have it like all in a box. But all I use is, I, like I said, I save all the egg cartons that we use. People, you know, save them for me, which is awesome. And, you know, paper plates. I've used real plates when I haven't had, like when I was out of paper plates. <laughs> it ends up being like a palette permanently. But I have like my one, you know, I have these mason jars I use. And you, you don't need anything fancy. All right, cool. I need to just get the bottom here. This is a fun painting. I really enjoyed uh, doing it. And I couldn't wait to teach this one. All right. So that is the base of our uh, cow skull. If you hear a slurp, that's just me sipping my tea. Like a lady. Not really. I'm being sarcastic. Uh, all right, so what we're gonna do now is we're actually going to pull all these shapes out of the skull. So really, this brown, this dark, is gonna be all the shadows in here. So that's how I teach. I talk, teach dark to light. I just feel like it's easier for people to learn, to, to, I don't know, maybe because it's less scary when they're putting light onto dark rather than dark onto light. I think darker, the darker the color, the more it scares people. So basically, we're, um, we're gonna go dark and then add highlights to that. And at the end, what I do is then I do the, I take the darkest dark and the lightest light and then we, we make everything pop at the end. But it's really important that we go slow, we take steps. Okay, so what we're gonna do first is we're actually gonna keep our, or we're gonna use our brown. So we're gonna take, the, you know, wash and dry the brush. And you are going to do, let's do two scoops of white onto your plate. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna take a little bit of brown and you're gonna mix it with that white. Okay. So we want like almost like a tan color is what we're going for. I don't want you to ruin your pile of brown. I just want you to look. Just take it from the edge. Okay. So you have like a nice tanny color. So we go a little darker. All right. So now we have like a nice tan color. And remember, it does not have to be the exact color I have, okay? It doesn't have to be anywhere near that if you, if you don't want. I mean, you can have light purple for all I care. We're gonna be doing the same thing no matter what color you have. So I'm gonna show you, wash your brush. So we're gonna do some dry brushing. And I need your brush to be dry and clean because you can't really use, you can't really dry brush when you have a wet brush. 
All right, so we're gonna pull this stuff out. So I'm gonna use this flat brush, and I just, I just, I'm gonna take a little bit here, and I'm just gonna kind of go like this on my plate, just so there's no not gobs of it on there. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this kind of brow, this brow uh, curve here where the eyeball is gonna be, and I'm just gonna bring it around, okay? Bring it around. Um, starting is always the hardest thing, so I'm just gonna take my brush and I'm gonna bring it around. So you really have that feeling of roundness over here, okay? Um, and then what I want you to do is we're gonna actually gonna bring that line back that goes down the middle. And don't worry if it's not right directly down the middle, that does not matter, okay? But that's gonna help us with the measuring out. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing over here. Take this brow line. See, my leverage is funny going this way. And then you're just gonna go around and do the same thing on this side. And that's just gonna help, putting the eyes just kinda helps you understand where everything is, okay? All right, so now we're gonna dry brush. Just means you don't have a lot of paint on here. And we're just gonna kind of go slow. So see these these things over here. So I'm gonna take my brush. I have no idea. They're like cracks in the skull. I'm gonna take my brush and, and place it vertically. So you can kind of bring those, get those cracks in there just by going like this. And then you could switch it to the other way. But basically, you're just gonna fill that in. See how soft I'm going? Okay. It's t it feels like it's like less of a commitment. And then re-dip. And you're gonna come around here and you're gonna do the same thing with this skull. I have a lot of paint on there, I shouldn't have done that. And do the same thing. You want it nice and soft. Go all the way to the edge. Kinda. Okay, so stop right here. And then what I want you to do is do do it in reverse. Kind of keep those cracks in there. You just need a hint of those in there, just like that, okay? Now, you see this over here? There's some darkness over here. Let's keep, we're gonna keep the dark. See how I, if you already painted over it, don't worry about it, okay? Because we're gonna go with a highlight. We're gonna highlight these later and go back with the darks. Okay, so I, I want you to bring your brush again vertically like this and just pretend, see those, cra all these, they, they're like, they look like they're chipped away. I want you just to just kind of randomly put, if they're all the same length, it's gonna look like too uniform. So I'm gonna have you put all different lengths and then you're just gonna softly come down here, you cover the brown with that soft white or off white color. Just like that. Okay. Just kind of, you know, always go back and put more. We're going to do a whole nother layer here. Come up here and put a little bit more up here. I love dry brushing. And sometimes it takes a couple times to get used to. I know sometimes when people first start it, they get very, very frustrated. But don't worry. I think I just banged into the camera. Sorry about that. Don't worry. It just takes some time. So we're going to do the op op this on the opposite side. So we're going to come through here. And I like to kind of come down here and keep that sort of crack thing going here and then come up and we're going to elaborate on that this is just to kind of give you a guide and I like going you know I like dry brushing because you go super slow we're going to do the same thing down here and of course we're going to you know this, this is honestly, all this is right now is to guide us when we do our when we do our lights and darks later. So really, if you were like, oh my God, I made a mistake, don't worry about it. There's nothing you could have done that
that's a mistake because this is all just learning. Go slow. Okay, all we're doing is covering the brown very lightly with a light shade. Don't worry if yours doesn't look like that or you lost all those pieces because we're gonna go back with the dark. This is just to help you know that they're there. Okay. And do the same thing up here. And what you, if, if you lost the line in the middle, don't worry about it. I just want you to have it there with your imagination. I just want you to know it's there. It's so funny that my dog is thinks every time I talk that I'm talking to her. I mean, she's smart because who in the right mind would be talking to a camera? Me. All right, so now it's starting to come out. And you can see that this doesn't look exactly like that. All right. All right. Yay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back up here and we're going to do the same sort of thing. So uh, we're going to go kind of up and around. I like to make all different shapes by using you can switch I like to make my brush flat by just going like going like this and like this and you kind of use it like a razor blade and you can kind of bring it this way just put some shapes in there for now we're gonna go back don't worry this is just to kind of get us going we're gonna do some in here something in there very softly very gently All right. again play with your brush like maybe have it flat here then maybe turn it like this you're gonna get a longer uh, thinner stroke now's the time to play around and I know I say that with ease because I do it. This is what I do. So for me, I'm not scared. But I know if this is like, you know, somebody's first time or, you know, you don't have a lot of experience, I can t completely understand why you'd be hesitant. Okay. All right. So we're, we're getting there. All right. So next we are going to do another coat. Not, we're going to keep these these guys here lighter but we're just going to dip our br our um, brushes back into that same color and you're just going to let's start here cuz this part on the on the front is a little bit lighter so we're just going to make it a little bit lighter using another coat of this and i know it looks a little yellower there so we're going to do that later don't worry about that right now so we're going to do that do that. All it is is another coat of this off-white color. We did. I did it here too. So the key to this is doing it slow. You want to do it nice and slow, and lots of layers. And then I have another highlight here. Same over here. We do the same thing on the other side. Okay. Whatever you do on one side, do on the other. Let's do the same thing over here. Do some in the middle. always add more I wouldn't go crazy up here because that's all gonna be covered so I don't want you to waste your time all right when you are happy with it then oh, let's put a little 
down here. Again, if you want to switch brushes at any time, do that. I'm Miss Lazy. All right. All right, cool. So let's do it that again up here. If you want to just do, every time we go lighter, we do less, okay? So you don't want to cover up everything you did before, but you're just going to put just touches less of less of this color. So lighter, less. And really all this is is a building up process. That's it. We're just going to build, build, build. Okay. So let's see. What I want you to do now is we are going to add, I don't want you to get rid of this whole pile, but I do want you to take some yellow and just have a separate pile and just kind of work some yellow in into this color that we did. And I don't want it to look like yellow, yellow. I just, I want it to be neutralized, but I want it to just be a little bit more yellow than what we have here, okay? So you see how I worked it in? You could, it's very, it's not very dramatic, but it just kind of makes it a little bit, it kind of makes it pop just a little bit. So I want you to take that new yellow. Please feel free to pause me anytime if I'm going too fast. I know I kind of hop from one thing to the next. But I just like adding this color, this tint of a little bit of a yellowier. Yellowier? Yes, I make up words too. Yellowier color. And because I mix, even my paintings, when I redo them, don't come out the same as those, which is good. I don't want my paintings to come out the same. All right, so, you know, feel free to add any, anywhere you want. So don't wash your brush. I want you to dip this brush, the same dirty brush in white and just make use the rest of whatever that yellow color was on your brush to make a very light color. So you're not gonna have white, but you're gonna probably have like a nice light version of that yellow color. And we're gonna dry brush, and I might have a little, you can even wipe that brush off on your paper towel, but you're, I just want you to add some super highlights on there. All right, you can add some in here. See how light I'm going? I mean, really light. Like you could even, I have a tablecloth on, so when I teach, I always tell people, oh, you can just brush it on your tablecloth. But I don't know what you're working on at home, so. If you have a throwaway cloth or something you don't care about, you know, wipe it on there. And I just want you to, these are just highlights, like just accents. Okay. And you might not think it's a, it does a lot, but it does in the end. So I don't want you to abruptly stop at the head or anything like that. I know I said don't, don't really spend too much time up here, but don't make, I don't want there to be any kind of line because when we do these, these, designs on it, you'll see it through. So don't make it long, any kind of line. So I want you to turn your brush, flatten it like I said, so it's nice and flat and you can turn it this way and kind of have fun with these guys. And you could turn it this way. And just keep going until until you like it. Okay. Now you can wash your brush. So now we're gonna add some darkness in here. Some darkness. All right. So I want you to just wash and dry that brush and you're just gonna dip your brush in the black and I want you to go back into that brown pile 
And I want you to, so you're gonna have a very dark, dark chocolatey brown color, but because we're mixing a little bit of black, it kind of takes the edge off of that. Um, because we're mixing it with brown, it takes the edge off of that black so it's not like super intense. So once you have that, I'm gonna chuck that and I'm gonna use my little brush. So see, it's not fully black, it's just like really nice, dark, dark, dark brown. So you're gonna wash and dry that brown brush and now I'm gonna dip it in that dark color. And now you're going to, see these holes? I want you to make like a, almost. it almost looks like a half moon in the top of these holes. Okay, and then you're gonna come down the side Okay, now, so I like to swirl my brush to get a point, but you can actually flatten it too and use it like a razor blade. So what all you're gonna do is just gonna come in reverse and you're gonna come up like this. Just making a dark you're making it darker down here okay you can even come up a tiny bit up here and up here so here's where I like to use my pinky as um, a kickstand so I'm not gonna do a full-on line down the middle just because that's like setting you up just for failure. I like to do just accent lines. So I'll just kind of take my line. I'll just kind of go a little bit. I don't even like to make it straight. I mean, we're going to go back at the end with like a much darker color, but for now, let's try to get that light line back. Okay. So the reason why I have you do it with this color first, not, not the dark, 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 dark one is because it's just kind of giving you some practice. before we go do the dark dark later on there's a little tiny doodaddy down here where else all right so the eye again pause me if you need to pause me so this part of the eye is going to be a bit darker and this is where we're going to get into the dry brushing a little bit too so down here you'll have the background of the brown but up here is going to be darker Okay, so you're gonna come around this oval to redip. When I dip, you dip, redip. And you're gonna just smooth it out until it kind of transitions into the brown. I don't want it that dark yet. Okay, again, this is practice. That dark will come later. I just don't wanna. I don't wanna do that to you right now. So do the same thing over here. And please, if you feel comfortable, I would love to see your artwork. So if you could show us on in, in the Instagram or um, what's the other, Facebook. Gosh, what's wrong with me? The Facebook. All right, so now I want you to put a little dark in this here and then you know, you want to put some dark in up in here, up in here, and just honestly have fun. Okay, we're gonna do a little shadow action, maybe down here. Definitely right here. Again, just have fun. It's all just fun. Unless you hate doing this, then it really stinks. I'm sorry if you... <laughs> I guess not everyone loves to paint. and I, I don't know who couldn't love to paint, but, you know... I don't like math, and there's people who say, I don't know how people don't like math, so there's that. 
Okay, so we're gonna actually now mix some dark turquoise. And I made a lot of turquoise, so I'm gonna just take some part of my pot pile blah, 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 and mix some black into it. So it's nice and dark. I might even mix a little more blue in it. Just mess around. It doesn't matter, like I said before, it doesn't matter what color you have. I just want it different than the color that's there. And sometimes you think you have the right color or you enjoy, you like the color, but when you put it on your canvas, you're like, I kind of want it a little different and that's fine. Okay, so what you're gonna do, we're gonna do a little bit of dry brushing action here too. So we're just gonna, we don't need a whole, you can even take some off on your napkin. We're just gonna make it nice. If you don't hold the paintbrush, if you hold it really, really light, it helps. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start with the edges. If you wanna re-dip, re-dip. I like to just have this nice flow come, coming up here. And I like to kind of randomly go up a little bit, make it as natural looking as possible. Same thing down here. If you wanna turn your canvas over, upside down, whatever, you could do that. I might actually go a little bit darker, but for now this is fine. So we're gonna actually, after this, we're gonna do the same thing, but with lighter color. Okay, so I like to like kinda randomly go up. Can't really see, well, I'm gonna do up here first. Try to kind of just go around your skull. Jeez. I couldn't really reach the bottom, so I, that's why I'm doing this. I like to just do, uh, here's where I just talk and I don't even know what I'm saying, so ignore me. Or turn your music up. I just ramble. I feel like I need to sing when I do this or hum. La, la, la. I usually listen to music, so. Okay. And just randomly put stuff around. Okay, so if you have your regular, your original color, you can kind of work that in too. And that helps smooth everything out. So you work in reverse. That's the dog. That's me dog. See how if you kind of take that original color, it makes, it kind of tones everything down. I love overlapping. So I'll overlap one color, then I'll overlap it. Oops, whoop, well, that's supposed to be there. Okay. So when you get close to your skull don't feel like you, you can't you know take that original color and go this way again you can totally then just brush it down we're going to be putting shadows around like a drop shadow around so you can't really see much of that but this is a good time like if you have any transparency spots Now's the time to fill all that in. See how I'm taking that original color and I'm just overlapping some of that dark that I just did. Looks really cool. And you know, you can go do this as many times as you want. You can go back to the dark, add some dark, go back to the, the original color and just kind of go back and forth until you're happy with it because you might want yours darker than I have mine or lighter or whatever. This is all your creation. It's funny that I, I always, you know, tell my students like before you start, you sit down and there's like a white canvas and two hours later, or one hour later, 
you have created something that never existed. It's a pretty powerful thing. I mean, people who don't do art think I'm nuts, but I, I think it's beautiful. And I get super excited and, you know, I enjoy, I just totally enjoy seeing people grow and learn and then go off and do their own thing. I absolutely love it. I can't wait to see people again, grown-ups. I mean, I love hanging out with my boys. I just, I feel like, is there, a, is there a point where like I'm gonna forget how to behave like an adult? Who am I kidding? I wasn't much of an adult before, but that's even scarier. Yikes. So I guess it's good that I have a few two people that I'm talking to. All right, so just mess around with that. Woo, whoa, sorry. Mess around with that until it's, you know, how you like it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that same dark color and we are going to make, let's put, we're gonna put a shadow inside the nostrils. Do so you know how we made that half moon shape at the top? We're gonna to do the same thing at the bottom. All right, and then we're going to kind of come around the edge. Here's where I really like to make noises. I don't know, it helps me make a straight line. All right, so after you do that, I just want you to kind of feather it out so it's not a, sh a hard edge. Just feather it out with your paintbrush. If you have too much paint on it, just dry, wipe it on your napkin, but I want you to feather it out. If you feel better feathering it with the bigger brush, do that. I feel like sometimes the small paintbrush doesn't feather good. I'm gonna feather some of this down here too. So it's not so abrupt. So if I change to this paintbrush, it definitely, I, I don't want you to use the big one if you feel like it's way too big. Use whatever you feel comfortable with. You could use bowls. But I definitely, I feel much better using this middle one. So, if you have one that I'm not using that you want to use, you know, use that. Whatever. in there. Now we're going to do the same thing up here. We're gonna, we have a shadow here. Then the shadow comes under here. Even if you don't like your shadow, all you do is use your background color and go over top of it. Very easy to fix. So my background's still wet, so I can't get as dark as I want, but we'll, we'll wait till it dries and we'll go back over with the dark, darker one at the end. We're surprisingly getting near the end. I hope you guys are still with me. <laughs> I hope I didn't lose anybody. So I'm just softening that by washing and drying my brush. So I'm gonna add a little bit more black and I'm gonna make an even darker, the darkest of my, my blue, okay? And I'm just gonna kinda not put as much, just put a 
Actually, I don't wash my brush a little because it was goopy. Goopy, goopy. So I like to gradually get to the dark. I don't like to kind of abruptly get there. I feel like you need to go slow. But this is just the way I do it. Let's see, it's a little darker over here. Kind of just mess around till you like it, until you're happy. So when I when I paint, I just always like to go slow, just because I feel like people who go who paint really 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 fast who don't normally paint, they just kind of go ah. I think that they end up kind of regretting. They go too fast and they go, oh man, I ruined it. Just go slow. I'm gonna make these a little less bright. All right, now we're gonna go back to our brown and we're gonna add even more black. I don't want straight up black, but I want very close. And I just want you to kind of make these a little bit more intense, just at the top. And I want you to, once you have some black in there, Wash that off, dry that off, really, really good, and feather it down. Okay. Now I'm going to take some of that, whoop, that light, light color here. I look like there, there's like a little bit of a glare inside there. Glare inside there? I don't want to do it, overdo it. I'm going to put some. I know there's not one over here on the original, but I'm going to put some over there. All right. So as you can see, this doesn't look exactly like that. So before we do all the designs, I want you to... Now, I... See how I make a big pile, and then I, I kind of leave a spot for the dark, and then I leave a spot for the light. So I'm just gonna take some white, and I'm gonna just mix it in with some of that original background color that I had. And I'm just gonna kind of come in with some light now. Again, that's my dog, if you're wondering. I think you probably figured that by now. So, you could either leave it like this, I mean, what? it's totally up to you, or you could take the original color and kind of blend it in a little bit. Up to you, I kinda like it like this. I might have mine a little rustier, rusty key here. But I want you to finish the background. Whatever we're, you're doing, I want you to do it until it's finished because we are going to want that to be dry. We're gonna do these designs and then we're gonna come back and do the swirly swirl thingies. And, and then that's it. And you know, this is the time where if you want more dark in there, put it in. If you want, you know, whatever adjustments you want to make, do that now. Okay. I should make sure it's still going. What are we at? One hour and 15 minutes. Look at that. Not that it matters. I mean, you know. All right. 
slurp, slurp, slurp. All right, so let's wash and dry our brushes. And if you want to change your plate, I think I want a new plate. <clears throat> I want you to wash and dry both, both those brushes, dry especially. So for these colors down the middle again I have more of like a turquoise like a Native American turquoise which is I don't think I added much yellow to that so but I did add some black just to kind of neutralize it a little bit and I added some white so get to a nice turquoise that you like okay it could be the same as your background color does not matter but I don't think I even have enough. I am going to take a new brush and mix some more. That'd be ghost painting. Ghost painting is, well, I made that up. Made, I made this up, but ghost painting in Carrie World is when you think you, the more you scrub at your plate, like somehow miraculously, more paint will appear instead of mixing new paint because I'm lazy. Yeah, that's ghost painting. Okay, so get your turquoise that you want for the head design. Mine's gonna be a bit different. Okay, once you have a nice little pile, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that tiny little brush. Now remember, you can spin it or you can flatten it. Now I always like to use my pinky as a kickstand. So if you think about where, how far down this is gonna go, and again, I'm just showing you a mine you don't need a lot of paint at all. Let's start by making just two lines coming down. Okay. So you can actually make a, let's, let's see, the top of this probably goes a little bit higher than the eyes. So let's bring that all the way up. All the way up. So now you just have two stripes going down the face. Okay, You can keep the middle. I mean, we're going to go back with a darker color down the middle, so um, don't worry about if you lost that line down the middle. So we're doing sort of like a A zigzaggy what do they call it a chevron shape so let's let's start at the top let's do almost like it looks like an arrow coming down okay so let's do that and then we're gonna do an arrow like sort of the same shape on both sides going like that okay and then let's, let's see, let's connect it like this. Let's, let's go easy like that first. And paint it in. And again, <clears throat> if you don't want this design on it, you, mean you don't have to have this design. You can put anything. You can make pink polka dots. I don't judge. Plus I can't see you, so I don't know. All right, read it. <clears throat> You're gonna go up. Well, let's see what's better to do. Let's let's do our second zigzag. Let's do this. And how is this going up? Oh, going up. And then let's do the zigzag in the bottom. So let's go. This and this should be parallel. Okay. Let's go up a little bit. Let's do another zigzag up a little bit. It's probably easier just to go all the way up. Whatever way works for you. And then 
same thing up here. We're going to have zigzag of orange coming up here too. So I don't think my zigzags are the same. And that's okay. All right, so now my leverage really is off, so. Have a zigzag there. And a zigzag there. And you know what might help you too? If you if you remember how I said do when you turn it upside down, it helps to make things a little bit more even when you look at something from a different perspective. Also, if you go all the way down around here, so you know that the zigzags are gonna stop here. Okay? And if you come across, you can see where your zigzags are even. So I know this next one's gonna start about right here. You want the tip to be right here. I know Daisy. So if it helps, this, these are like parallel and these are parallel. So this and the, this are parallel. This and this are parallel. That might be the most complicated part of the entire painting. Okay. Let me do a quick coat again on this side, a quick coat again on that side. And don't worry if it's not completely even. Mine's not even on that at all. All right, so once you have one in, the rest should be easy. So what I want you to do is just add a little bit of white to, to that. You don't, Not drastically, but I'm just going to kind of make it look a little bit more rusticy by putting some white highlights in there. It also distracts the fact that they're not even. <laughs> okay. Next, we're going to do orange. So that's like a reddish orange, so I added some red just orange okay so I I put some a tiny bit of blue in here just to neutralize it a tiny bit I also added some white just so it covers better and again I didn't wait my I didn't mix enough All right, let's try that again. And again, you don't need to mix the same colors as I'm doing. You could do whatever colors you want. But at least now that we have that blue one in, we have a much better guide. So what I want you to do is just go parallel. Just go next to the blue line and just paint that in. So that's painted in. Use that tiny brush. Just when you get to the middle, I want you to kind of come up like a little teepee in the middle. Okay. All right, so this line's gonna be a bit thicker, so I'm gonna have it end probably around right here, okay? 
Now the red line, think about the red line. So you're only gonna have this and then a red thing down the middle. So I'm looking at that shape. So the rest of this, I'm just gonna paint in. I know it's completely different than my original and that's fine. Just gonna paint all that in for now. So I'm going to go on top of it with a little bit of red. So I have all that in there. I don't know how I did my zigzags like way different. So if you want to, if you want to mess around with the zigzags a bit, you can. I think I put more zigzags in mine. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. No, they're the same. But how on earth? I think I went up a little bit. So if you want to do that, you can mess around with the zigzags a bit. Goes along with like my, my, the fact that I don't like math. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Wow, yeah, I was way off. This is where I was kind of off. But this goes to show you too how easy everything is to fix. You just cover it back up. And I think this one is where I was lost. Yeah. You're gonna love when I'm at the end, we're gonna just go make swirlies all over the background. I'm being sarcastic because I know that's probably gonna like make some people go crazy. We're just gonna go right in there. <laughs> all right, cool. So take your time doing that, as much time as you need. Also, feel free to look up another design. I got a little fingerprint in there, that's why I'm doing that. So we're gonna do red next. I'm just gonna mix a little bit of white. I don't want pink, but I wanna mix. I'm actually gonna neutralize it with the red with a little bit of green, just a tiny bit of green. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit of white. All right. So once you get a nice red borderline pink color, then we are going to Take that tiny brush, and we are going to I think I uh, yeah, I think I'll just maybe I'll make I'm gonna make mine a little bit different. Feel free to do the same. Or do, you know, your own thing. So if you go to do the, all these, these, you know, these Native American patterns and say you're like, man, I really screwed up. Or, and, you know, if this is the case with anything that you paint, if you're like, man, you're getting frustrated and you're like, I screwed up, I would say walk away, take a breath, 
come back, even if you screw up and you want to start over, all you have to do is take the original, one of these original colors and paint over it. Just make sure it's dry. And then just start over. So my leverage feels funny, so I'm gonna just turn it upside down. And again, I can see, I can see kind of, I can make it more balanced when it's upside down. That's funny, I can make it balanced when it's upside down. I meant balanced on either side. And again, of course, it does not have to be perfect at all. I'll just mess around with these shapes. So when you look at mine, you know, this one is obviously different than that one. Does it matter? Not really. So, you know, feel free to kind of elaborate on things and kind of go off and make decisions. And like I said, I know that's hard to do at first, but the more you do it, the easier it gets. So the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna dip our paintbrush in the black. Now your leverage really does have to be, like you have to be comfortable. So get into a place where you're comfortable. And the thing about like when you do swirls or lettering or anything like that, you want to be comf like you want to be you don't want to be like re having a funny reach or anything like that and I like to put my pinky down to, um, to for balance so I can hold my hand kind of, I have better control over my hand also kind of try to do it in one swoop but try to visualize where you're gonna go before you go okay so I'm gonna kind of kind of come down here go there go there even if your paint runs out of even if your brush runs out of paint just keep going, okay, don't stop. And you can always go back and put it in. So the reason why I, I put white and the black is because the white actually makes, it kind of distracts the black. So you're not looking at any kind of places where you screwed up. That's really, I'm going with that. All right, so this is the same sort of thing. So you wanna get good leverage and you wanna go Whoop, whoop, whoop. Go back, and you can always go back and put more paint in there. I could never do this unless I used my pinky ever. So some people like to do this. I, I don't like to do that. Um, but if you like to do that, do it. You know, everybody's different. So same thing over here. Think about where you're gonna go first. I'm gonna end up in the middle here. All right, let that dry a tiny bit. So use this time now to kind of like, before we put the white, cause I'm gonna let it dry a bit. To go around and play play with you know your colors if there's anything you want to fix if you want to go work on this a little bit i know that i'm going to go back with the black and i'm going to just put a tiny bit black down the middle okay And then I'm going to put a tiny bit of black coming up in here. Tiny bit of black. Over there. Tiny bit of black up here. A little bit over here. Just to make it pop a little bit. Tiny bit. Here, and it here. And kind of, yeah, go around and see 
or you might need, or you missed anything. I think I missed, I mean, this is like nitpicking, but I missed a shadow under here. You want to do a second coat on these, do that. All right, so when you're ready, wash and dry that paintbrush off. I'm going to do white now, so I'm going to, when, I'm, when you're done with the black and you feel good about it, I want you to just take that small paintbrush with the white. You're going to do the same thing. Let's give the, the black a little bit more time to dry. If you want to put some white kind of like accents around here. Just everything's very slow. But see how things pop at the end? You use very dark and very lights and you make everything pop. All right, so when you're ready, so you can even there decide if you want one of these lines to come over the other black like this, and then you can have the other go under. So I'm just gonna whoop. So you can go over like this and have one of them, it makes it look like the other one's coming under. You can even switch and go whoop. Okay. Yes, and when I say whoop, it helps me. So try it. Don't knock it till you try it. So what would I do here? Oh, I went this way. And he stopped. Kind of go in the back. Doesn't really matter. So it definitely distracts, which is good. I mean, I definitely feel like when you say whoop, it helps. You should definitely figure out what works for you. Just because I do something doesn't mean it's the only way to do it. I mean, I'm sure you knew that, but you know, or you know, the way somebody else does it isn't the only way to do it, you know? And when you go to paint, it's it's scary. When you go to do anything for the first time, it's scary. But the more you do it, the less scary it becomes. So do it more and you'll see. It gets easier every time. So that's it. Thank you for bearing with me. And um, I hope that you check out some of my other YouTube videos and um, yeah, if you want to comment, make sure to subscribe so you know you get alerted every time something new goes up. And um, yeah, if you have any suggestions of you know things you want to paint or suggestions on how I teach or any comments at all, uh, keep it positive. <laughs> Even if it's you know you know something that you want to you think I, I you know some something you want to tell me about that you think could enhance my teaching abilities. Um, I'm totally open to that. So, yeah, um, I appreciate you joining me today. And, uh, yeah, till next time, happy painting.